Hi, this is Mrs. Shepard, and we're going to do a CVC dressing. Um, so this patient here is in bad shape. As you can see, um, they don't really have a head, but the chest is very nice. And they have a triple lumen central venous catheter. Okay. Um, I have washed my hands, identified the patient, provided privacy, and explained the safe procedure. These um, dressings will be changed depending on what's running um, every 48 to 72 hours, and that uh, again depends on your hospital policy. Right now, I'm going to use a lovely uh, CV dressing change kit. You might not always have these, so you kind of got to pay attention to what's in the kit so you can gather your supplies separately. Again, it's very important that you have the supplies that you need before you get started. Um, inside this kit is a mask. I'm going to mask myself and the patient. So I brought in an extra mask and I'm going to place this on the patient. Um, if the patient is claustrophobic or for some reason they can't tolerate a mask, you're going to ask them to turn their face to the other side when you have the dressing open. Again, I'm going to grab this mask, place it on my face. This is a biohazard bag, which you may or may not always have. Um, and you're going to open that up and get it ready. Now you are going to start from the outside with your clean gloves. Just begin to loosen up the tethered. Okay. Now this is definitely going to stick to those three lumens. So kind of hold on to the base plate here as you pull this up. And this is the point that the patient should be turning their face to the side and they should have the mask firmly in place. Okay. So because right now we're going to open this insertion site to air. Now open to air. So if you were gathering supplies separately and you didn't have this nice kit, you would need to have clean gloves, sterile gloves. Um, you would need to have possibly some tape, some 4x4s, um, antibiotic ointment or benzoin ointment, that, uh, if that's what your hospital calls for. Possibly a small split dressing. Um, not really a lot of places use these because they like to see the insertion site. They like to see if there's any drainage from that site. Swab sticks. Usually, if this is going to be hospital specific, it will be chlorhexidine or it will be ben benzoin. The brown stuff, okay? So now, I'm going to take my swabs. There's three of them. And I'm going to swab from the inside out, from the inside out, and throw it away. And I'm going to get another one from the inside out, throw it away. From the inside out, throw it away. 
And I'm just noticing that. So now I'm going to grab my pegator. And again, these are kind of specific to whatever hospital you're at. This one's oval. Some of them are not oval. Um, this would be also the point if your hospital requires you to put some antibiotic ointment on the insertion site, go ahead and do that. You're going to be looking at the insertion site. You're going to document redness, draining, pain, swelling, anything that's out of the ordinary, anything that's going to signal an infection. You're going to place this over the insertion site and the blue butterfly hook. Follow this around. Make sure that um, one thing that does get left hair, if the patient has longer hair, they might, you want to be very careful to get that out from under this tegaderm because remember that this tegaderm is going to, is, is sterile and their hair is not. So if they have hair that they haven't washed in a week, we got a little bit of a problem now, don't we? I'm going to date, time, and initial. You're going to dispose of your equipment. You're going to document. Um, how the patient tolerated procedure, anything out of the ordinary. Um, this would be also the time that if it was the day to change them, you would change the caps on here. Okay. And that's it.